Uh, Brian, I think you want to might take this next question because it has to do with your boy, Sheamus. I mean, next. Yeah, I'm talking about Triple H, but it's okay. <laughs> but Sheamus, the next Triple H, yeah. Well, Sheamus isn't my boy yet, Triple H. Sheamus, the next Triple H. Um, yes, I say no. I think he's got the evil streak to drive him, but how long can it drive him? Um, Sheamus is kind of a unique character. There wasn't too much buildup. He was kind of thrown on us quickly. I know he built up a little bit, you know, in Florida Championship and uh, ECW, but in the main event scene in the WWE, uh, Triple H definitely had the tenure. He had the back storyline. He was a good guy. He was a bad guy. He was a good guy. He was a bad guy. You know, you never knew what you were going to expect. The guy came wheeled in a sledgehammer. You know, Triple H was, you know, Triple H was one, probably one of the best characters ever to come out of World Wrestling Entertainment. And he w was... WWE, whatever you want to call him. Um, he worked with the dirtiest player in the game and honed his skills even more in uh, 2002, 2003, and until as far as late 2004. So, you know, I mean, Triple H had a lot of years experience to hone his craft and still, and still goes out there and tears the roof off the house. But Sheamus... Giving him the time to shine, giving him the spot, then, you know, putting him with someone that, you know, can help him hone his craft, maybe, you know, maybe triple, when Triple H retires, maybe uh, Sheamus will carry that flag of being, you know, the toughest guy in the business, you know? Uh, well, who knows? I mean, uh, if Sheamus is still developed properly, I mean, uh, they kind of, they get Orton over on Monday night, they kind of made Sheamus look like the biggest punk going. I mean, he was shaking after Orton uh, almost punted him in the head. I mean, visibly. And, exactly. you know, that kind of destroys that tough guy character because I couldn't really see Triple H shaking like that. You know what? I really couldn't. Uh, I answered this question in a video last week, uh, WWE Too Much PG. Uh... I'm just going to go ahead and say, you know, there's so many things right now that require the WWE to be PG. There's a lot of politics. Obviously, Linda McMahon running uh, for uh, U.S. Senate. And it's just, it's really difficult for them to try to look back at what she did as a at back in the day when you see, you know, scantily clad women, women posing for Playboy, uh, people getting kicked in the nuts on a date nightly basis, people pointing to their crotch on a nightly basis. You know, I mean, right now, if, you know, I could see WWE losing the PG thing if Linda doesn't get elected into the candidacy. Uh, I think that WWE cleaning up uh, from PG kind of, you know, Linda Senate campaign is part of it, but I really think it happened after the whole uh, media exposure. I mean, that really looked into the world of the WWE after Benoit died. And around that same time, McMahon, the whole faking of his death. And a lot of media outlets came out. And well, that was how, the faking the death of the Mr. McMahon character because he wanted to take time away from the ring to spend it with his grandchildren. Yeah, but the, the, the way that the media community looked at him uh, and then the whole Chris Benoit and then, you know, he had to cut out of that whole Mr. McMahon death angle and and then the uh, Linda campaign. I think it all fuels into uh, what they're trying to do. They're trying to clean it up, capture a younger demographic, Kind of go back to the cartoonish era of the early 90s. I mean, the Attitude Era was fueled by the Monday Night War. Uh, WWE has no direct competition anymore. I mean, they had competition with TNA, but they jumped back to Thursday nights. Well, I mean, even their competition with TNA, I love TNA, but, uh, and I'm a you know, loyal TNA watcher, but uh, TNA could not pull even close to the numbers that WWE could pull. That's why they had it. one of the reasons they had to go back. For the fans, yeah, fans liked it better on Thursday, but it was that, you know, you're only pulling a quarter of the ratings as WWE. What's the point of losing all those numbers? Why not just have your own night of wrestling? Exactly. You know. Uh, the next question is Kane a good World Heavyweight Champ. I think Kane deserves it. I think Kane has the tenure. He's uh, been through some brutal matches, been through gruesome contests. He's definitely sharpened his in-ring ability and his mic skills. And, yeah, let him have the belt for a little bit. Definitely. I mean, Kane's been in the business for so long, like Brian said, and it's just, you know, he's really deserving. He bided his time, didn't really have any gripe about it, you know, and at this point in time right now, you know, even if it is a storyline, Kane losing the title to Undertaker, blah, 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 say this, that, the other, etc. Still, Kane's still world champion, you know, I mean, it's a big thing right now in the business. 
you know, last time we remember Kane as uh, as a heavy champion was back in 98, and he only held the title for 24 hours at King of the Ring 98, uh, first blood match against Austin, and he really didn't even bust, bust Austin, Austin open. <laughs> Undertaker hit him in the face with the chair, and it kind of ricocheted Austin's chair into his face. So, you know, and then he went out on the next night on Raw, stunned him, you know, and that's another thing. All right, that's another big thing I have. You know, it took Undertaker three tombstones on a WrestleMania to put Kane down and one Stone Cold Stunner put Kane down for enough for four seconds to get the pin. I didn't see that. I didn't see what was going on with that, but... I don't know. Do you remember how uh, the Stone Cold Stunner used to be sold against The Rock? The Rock used to flip across the ring like a Oh, fish. yes. And then, I mean, come on. That, that was, was probably the best... That was probably the best selling for that move ever. I mean, look how people used to sell the people's elbow. I mean, that was the most ridiculous move on the face of the planet. I mean, as kids, we thought The Rock was awesome. He still is awesome. Don't get me wrong. But, I mean, the people's elbow was... It was funny. I mean... <laughs> Yeah, I mean it was funny. Uh, next question: Should Flair really leave the ring? Um, yes, he should leave the ring, but should he leave the business? No, I mean because right now he's mentoring uh, AJ Styles, Kaz, and Beer Money in TNA, and you know uh, TNA right now is they're gonna do something really big on Thursday night for uh, with the uh, the Fortune gimmick, and you know I mean Flair still has it. But you can't be putting him in the ring against somebody like Jay Lethal, you know. But I think that the reason why they did that is because to put Jay Lethal over. And I think um, I think Flair still has something to bring to the table. I don't think just because you get up there in age means your career is over. I think that he needs to be properly used. And if he's booked in a squash match, yeah, he's going to get squashed. Um, just like any of the legends. I think, you know, as long as they're in good shape and they can still go, let them go. If they can't go, then it's been their time. Um, I think it's pretty much as simple as that. Um, Next question, EV 2.0, staying for a bit longer. Uh, I think so. I mean, in the beginning video of Impact, they show Tommy Dream. They actually have added Tommy Dreamer and Rhino and Raven, I think, into the intro. But none of really, none of the other guys. So I believe that Dreamer is in the business to stay. Uh, Raven and Rhino as well. I mean, we all both know Rhino and Raven been in uh, contracts with TNA for a while now. Yeah, the big names, the big names. I don't think we're gonna see uh, Axel Rotten, Balls Mahoney, exactly. any, of, any of those uh, you know lower carb guys. Probably. Um, I know say TNA has got a pretty big roster to begin with. Um, I think they want to expand by a couple yeah. people, but. Um, EV, yeah. my my point, my points on this thing. I mean. There's only so much you could do with the EV 2.0 guys. Uh, I would keep some of the big carded guys around, you know. Like I mean, I would turn him more into an invasion angle. Exactly, or you know, keep guys like you know Guido. He could do stuff with the X division. Tony Mama Luke can do stuff with the X division. Uh, you could keep guys like the new uh, uh, the gangsters. I mean, you know, that'd be kind of cool to keep them around. You know, I mean, keep some of the younger. The, the lower card guys to see what the hone their skills, you know, and you know, and make their mark in a new company. I mean, a lot of those guys didn't really get to do much in the WWE when they were there. And well, I think uh, well, Nunzio definitely did. Nunzio did. He did a, did do a lot with the uh, WWE, but he really wasn't uh, a draw. I think in TNA is the place to go to be make yourself be, uh, make yourself TNA's, better. TNA is a nice starting ground now. It's yeah. uh. Christian went over there and was champion for almost a year. And yeah, then went well, to, back to WWE, and now he's back to the mid-card. Well, low-card. He's doing Superstars tapings. This is a point I argued in another one of my videos for our SmackDown results, 8-13-2010. They'll be up in a little bit. Please check those out also. Uh, I have all the results for Friday night. Um, I don't know. Did we get everybody? Yes, it's, uh, that leaves us with no questions. Hopefully, me and Brian answered our questions as best as that we could, and, you know, you guys, our viewers who sent us in the questions are satisfied. Please leave more on this video. We will do another one of these as soon as we get enough questions to merit one. Exactly. Um, we appreciate all of the support. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Um, There's not really much left to say except for we are effing true wrestling, JC Styles, Brian Crazy, and, and we'll see you guys next week. And thank you.